All right, in the top left of Revolver, we have action. And in the top right, none other than light. Okay, so Revolver, this map has been pretty popular for uh, Crazy Zerg builds, and I'll go ahead and just describe that for anyone who doesn't understand. Crazy Zerg is, I didn't name it that, but it's basically, it's skipping lurkers and defilers. It's going from mutalisks into very quick carapace upgrades and going directly towards ultralisks, uh, which was super, super popular a few months ago. Uh, and has a ridiculously high win rate, actually, but it has fallen off a little bit. Uh, but Action has been someone that has really liked that style and done very, very well with it. So, uh, yeah, I'm kind of sitting here wondering if we're going to see it a lot from him tonight. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see if he does do it. I've always been really intrigued by the Crazy Zerg style, this whole skipping lurker tech. And part of the reason why I'm interested in it is I feel like as someone who doesn't play Zerg, I, I think I could pull it off. <laughs> you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I mean, it really just comes down to controlling Lings pretty well and, and you know, you get your mutas out. Mm -hmm. uh, but then, yeah, you just sort of turtle and try to power into, you know, that, that later game tech. We have seen, and I don't think we're going to have it here, but I'm just going to put it out there in case it does occur, um, some queen play with Crazy Zerg where you get in yeah. snare. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I, I don't know. I mean, you're the Terran player here, Atosa. Mm -hmm. So I don't know how common that is to encounter on the ladder or if that was really like an ASL special. But it just seems to me like that is extremely uh, destructive for the, uh, the Terran if the ensnare connects and you can just wipe out the army. Hey, you know, it, it seemed like it was going to be the next big thing. But honestly, you don't see the ensnare variant very often anymore. Uh, really? It's, it's pretty rare. Like if I play Crazy Zerg 20 times... On the ladder, I will see it one or zero times in those 20 games. Um, Interesting. Yeah, okay. it's, it's pretty rare. So it, there is this other variant that I was kind of mentioning before. I'll talk about that in a second. I do want to just mention the build orders. It is an eight barracks opener from light. Just a single eight barracks with a with a wall. Uh, and action actually went pool first because eight racks is super popular on revolver because you do have this little wall that you see from light where it's like, you can not only put on pressure, but, like, instantly expand without building extra buildings. Like, you don't necessarily yeah. need a bunker or anything because it's the tiny ramp, so... Oh, Whoa. my God. Look Whoa, at this. That is the quickest academy ever. This is crazy. So, you know, this is why light is such a threat here. And we were talking, you know, for most of the pre-show, basically, um, about the fact that, you know, he's so good at the SK Terran and he's very good at the straight up style, but this is actually an opening that's going to make it look to the Zerg like the Terran is actually doing that expand build that we were kind of talking about. Eight mm -hmm. racks and a pressure, you throw down a CC, but quietly he gets an academy and I believe that's a second barracks that's being made just at the ramp. Mm -hmm. So he's going to do a surprise push. Yeah, yeah. Now the only information that Action has that might lead him to figure this out is the barracks is still blinking. So that's like, yeah. you're looking at that, and that's like a lot of Marines that you see, actually. Why would someone make this many? When you have a wall like this, normally what you do is cut Marine production and tech up a little bit quicker. Uh, like, you'll just, you'll skip things. You'll add other things on power up. So there is something a little bit fishy, I think, uh, from Action's point of view, but we'll see if he actually catches on to that or is able to counter it. But... I mean, from Light's position, in these spots, you can't get an Overlord over the ledge. You can't check for the, the command center. And by the way, something kind of funny to say. Now, the positioning is, is is key to this, but the actual build order itself, if you just ignore the positions, is probably the oldest TVZ build <laughs> yeah. since Brood War came out. Well, this was like how people played literally 23 years ago. Mm. Was two barracks is in their main, get an academy, and then start moving around with Medic Marine. Um... And that eventually became obsolete because all the Zerg has to do is make enough sunken colonies that they stop it. And that's why mm. nobody does it anymore. But setting it up to, to, to look like an expand build and then doing a surprise push, this is going to be a problem here for action. The sunken colony is on its way. It finishes up. The Ling's coming here first around. And it looks like, you know, there's just enough damage, enough mm. surface area that the Zerg wins the fight. The sunken colony, I think, keeps at least 100 HP. Uh, and keep in mind, it's already hard enough to move up a ramp with those eggs anyways. Yeah. 
That was a very solid hold there, but more fire bats popped out, and he is going down towards the third, so he should be able to knock out the third. But even knocking out the third, action is still on two base against one, which, yeah, this, it, it, this isn't lights out for action. Yeah, this is going to be tough. Uh, Lings can beat fire bats, but if the fire bats are not placed correctly, and see that fire bat sticking on the outside that's not attacking, he basically has the perfect surface area where the yes. links can't surround. Yeah, he so, ba he placed subtle, everything but, perfect there. Like you can't yeah. you can't attack that basically. It's like this weird triforce of fire bats. You set them up in that position, and then the links will all melt because of oh. the way that the the splash damage spreads. Yeah, and it, very well done there by Light. But Action made it like a lot of Zerglings here, so it looks like he wants to go all in. But there was an SCV in front of the Marines on the ramp. Now the SCV has been pulled back. He has a medic out in the front there, so that is incredibly hard to break. And with the amount of lings that Action made, I actually now, I, I think Light is totally fine. I was actually a little bit nervous for him, because imagine if most of those lings, like at least half were drones, Action's economy would be insane right now. Instead, he has all these lings that, against three fire bats here and then a wall back at home, they don't actually do anything. Is there a chance Terran tries to push again, or is it better to just try to sit back and turtle? Well, if he figures out exactly how many lings there are, which I think he has a decent idea, you just sit there because you're going to outscale Zerg 100%. Like, you'll hit a critical mass where the lings aren't going to do anything to you anymore. And he's actually almost there with three fire bats. Like, he's very close to the point where these lings just can't touch that army. So interesting. So, you know, I, I thought maybe the Terran would actually bust down the natural, but getting that, that third hatchery is pretty big. Um, and there's a lot of momentum right now for Terran. I mean, they've massed up quite a bit. I think he wants to come out here and try to force some more sunken colonies. Yeah, in fact, he might even go up the other way and try to just uh, bust in without going up the little tiny ramp. That makes a lot more sense. And, I mean, if you have four sunks, you're going to hold... But at least you're forcing all those sunks, right? Like, that's that's pretty expensive. The drone count is not that high because Action made so many lings anyways. So this position keeps on getting better for light. Yeah, getting these sunks forced out, it sucks for the Zerg, man. Because remember, guys, every drone has to turn into the building. So you are losing drones, and the Terran doesn't have to engage this. They go, okay, you made enough. All right, I'm out of here. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the Zerg is not constantly producing drones like a Terran uh, or a Protoss are. The, the Zerg actually function way differently than Terran and Protoss. So they need to get a set number of drones and then start powering up elsewhere. So, again, another good play here by Light, just trying to keep that edge here. Yeah, now Action retakes the bottom left uh, natural expansion. So that is his third base going up once again. These lings continue to run around. There are some mutas popping out. Obviously, they're like a little bit slow. They're in the middle, kind of chasing around some of these units as well. But, yeah, I, I, I mean, Action, he has a long road back, but he does have an evolution chamber. So he shows us that he wants to go for Crazy Zerg. He wants to focus on Carapace upgrades, which, again, is a style that he's been utilizing a lot lately. So we're going to see if that works out for him. Yeah, back at home, it, does, it just doesn't seem like the Terran can really be touched here. You know, with the third base finishing up now for Action, you know, he's going to be back into this, and he's going to basically need to rely on counterattacks. Oh, there's that Queen's Nest, Artosis. Mm -hmm. um, this is, yeah, this is setting up to go straight in the hive now. Yeah, yeah, he's going to want to get up to that Ultralist tech re reasonably quickly here. You know, the plus one is not going to be super fast for light or anything. He made a lot of units early on. The eBay comes later. So maybe action will be all right as far as his upgrades compared to lights. But his economy is not that big. Like, really, it... it Honestly, I look at this, and I, I feel like this is totally fine for Light, especially with his scans going down. He's kind of figuring out what's going on. It's pretty clear Action's not going to get a lot of damage done. I'm a little bit surprised he didn't make at least one missile turret there near the Raxes, but, I mean, Light, Light definitely knows best here. He's looking at this and knowing that he just has so many units, he doesn't even need Static D. Yeah, like, it's it sounds funny, but, like, literally save the extra 75 minerals for, like, an earlier barracks. Like, yeah. you know, um, and I pretty much Light can't be, you know, toyed with it all here. And that's a pretty big deal because a lot of times Zerg will eke out a lot of damage and really drain the Terran's resources trying to recover. Um, but instead, 
Uh, you know, it looks like Light's gonna push out. He's still got enough back at home that if there's a counterattack, nothing can happen. We see that right here now. And he doesn't see a counterattack, although I think that may be coming in a second. But, yeah, I mean, Light's in very good shape, and now he's gonna have this Wrecking Ball army, and he needs to try to find a target, and I think that target's probably gonna be the new third base in the bottom left. Yeah, you might be right about that. Uh, and he could actually hit the critical mass to break all the sunkens up at the top, too. Like, you eventually hit an amount of free medic where sunkens don't do that much anymore. But you see a ton of them being added by action. Uh, and let's not forget, some of these upgrades are a little bit later. Like, in a normal game, you'd have plus one armor right now as Terran, and you're way more right. sunken proof at that point. But he doesn't have it, so... Uh, and look, yes! Ultralist Cavern and Defiler Mound. So Action is using that new style that, honestly, I've I've seen it on the ladder, but the only... You know, Action's the only pro I've seen do this so far. Yeah, like, this is going to be fun to, to, to watch how he can handle this. By the way, this position with the Mutas is very good. He's getting a lot of damage here and not really dropping any Mutas in the process. Um... And so, you know, you're on three gases. How many ultras can a Zerg actually get? Is there a number we want to watch for? <laughs> no, it's not It's not really like that. It's more about, like, how much of your money is being spent on ultras. Like, if you, in, in a more even game, if you spend all of your gas after your initial mutas on ultras and you keep even on upgrades, so it's like plus two ultra carapace against plus two marine attack, same time, uh, then you have an army that, like, can fight against Terran. Uh, but in this case, like, he's going to be spending on Defilers as well, which is really, really gas intensive. So you're going to have less Ultras, so you can't just take a fight. But if you get any Dark Storms or Plagues down, that equalizes it really quickly or even makes it very Zerk favored. That makes sense. Ooh, great irradiates. Action barely pulls those Mutas out in time. All those Mutas are pretty squishy now. Um, we got the double drop ship, and. You know, this is pretty normal, you know, to have in a, in a TVZ nowadays is the double dropship. And we can even see the Zerg is literally set up to catch two dropships. Mm -hmm. There's literally about four or six Scourge that are basically ready to intercept this. And wow, he can, he's going to go with quad dropship. Ooh. I, this is actually pretty cool. I'm a um, little bit nervous about this, though, Tasteless. Like, yeah, this is such a strong move. Two science vessels into four dropships is one of the strongest things you can do as Terran in this matchup. But if he catches these, if he repels this, that is a huge... That's 40 well, supply we're looking at. Yeah, I know. I mean, it's an insane amount that's here, but I don't think he's going to stop it. Okay, well, hold on. Oh the, the, the Scourge are coming up here. They're going to get two. And I don't know if there's actually enough on the ground here to fight this. I feel like Light one might have wanted to be a little bit more careful with kind of turning those drop ships as they, you know, pulled away because, you know, he's going to get almost nothing here. Maybe a drone or two, but yeah. these ultras are just going to win this fight. And, I mean, this this sucks right now for light. I mean, like you were saying, Artosis, that's 40 supply in those drop ships. Yeah, yeah. The net after that trade is minus four supply for action and minus 20 supply for light. So... Uh, yeah, it was quite a swing towards action in a lot of ways. It, the thing is, dropships lose a lot of value when you're playing against Ultra. Like, if Ultra is out, it's the easiest way to clean those up. Like, you need huge amounts of Marines to beat Ultras, and dropships just literally can't ferry enough to fight against them. Like, you see this? I mean, he's got decent upgrades and everything, but you can see that the Ultras just attack in, and that's it. It's just... You're losing extra units here, where this is all about critical mass for Terran right now, and he's not going to have that if he keeps spending dropships. It, it does seem like the, what the Terran wants to do is just get enough Medic Marines somewhere in the, either the top left main or the uh, bottom left main, and if you just have enough that you could swing a fight, maybe you win the game, but yeah, with three Ultras there, you just can't unload enough in time, mm -hmm. you know, before the Ultra is two shot down every Marine. Yeah, and you're on a little bit of a, a, a timer here is Terran because he's on Defiler and Ultra. Like, normally, they'll be on Ultra, and you just you try to keep that critical mass, and you have to kind of get them, keep enough pressure on that they can't go Defiler. In this case, Action is playing very defensively, very turtly, and eventually we're going to see him start plaguing, plaguing and dark swarming everywhere, and then he's got Ultra Link to back that up, and it's just going to be incredibly hard to play against. You know, you... you 
the counter to uh, Ultras and the counter to Defilers are completely different. Against Defilers, you want, like, smaller groups, so you're more maneuverable against Dark Swarm and Plague. Against Ultras, you need giant groups where you have the critical mass to actually gun them down. So this is, like, Light still has the advantage right now, but I am a little bit nervous for it. Yeah, me too. I mean, it looks like he's... He's okay, but it action seems to basically be untouchable right now. And, and this yeah. is an annoying thing. I know that there's a way that Zerg can play like this against Protoss where, you know, they're just, they're camped at these two naturals and mm -hmm. you can't really do much at this point in time. It's a frustrating moment in the game here. Um, Terran's taken the bottom right and that's going to be the Terran's third base. I feel like Terran should have another base, but maybe that's about to come here. Yeah, yeah, he he probably will. Like, it's so important to get that base up, but it, we see that he's just going to stay on just straight up Vessel Marine Medic. And as you can see, okay, he's coming in and irradiating some of these Ultras. And yeah, see the, the problem here? <laughs> it's it, The Dark Swarm just makes him kind of sit there, and then it's like, okay, now we can attack, but... This should all be buying enough time for action that he can get another Dark Storm down. Yeah, and you can see the Sunks, especially the row in the back, it's like perfectly placed where, you know, there's more surface area for the Sunken uh, Colonies and the rest of the Zerg units attacking, and the faceless. Marines can't really do anything. But uh, I think right now, do you see that science facility? That's where? Just, he just floated his buildings over the Nidus's so that he can't send anything through. Oh my god. My head just exploded. That's my crazy. head. Wait, 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 literally wait, wait. floated a factory over one and a science facility over the other. You can't this is click sick. anything through. I've never, never seen, seen this. Oh, I've never seen my that. My god. I feel like this is why ASL is so sick, dude. I, I can't believe we're seeing something we've never seen. I don't, I mean, if we haven't seen it, man, we've been around for a long time. That's never occurred to me. I mean, no, I know that never. when you have a floating building that, you know, you can cover up something and then they can't attack it. Like the classic one is an SCV on the ramp, but barracks is over it. And if you have a Marine behind it, the Zealots can't, they they, they won't be able to attack the SCV. They'll yeah, default into That's what he's doing the right there in the bottom right. But yeah, like that, yeah, that we just had a shot of it. That's I've crazy. never seen it. I've never seen it overnight as though. Like my brain is like in overdrive right now. Like new yeah. wrinkles are forming. No, that's that's absolutely. I'm insanity. wrinkle braining. Yeah, yeah. No, that like, I I mean I watch like every single Terran game, and that is the very first time. But I was wondering, I was like, why isn't why isn't he throwing down a dark storm? It's because he couldn't send anything through the Nidus's. Now the factory yeah. has died, and he made actually a secondary Nidus, which Light ran in and sniped. But a brilliant move here from Light that I guarantee you we're going to see again in the future. Oh my That's god. That's crazy. I've never you know, it, it, it's it's it guys, you have to understand, like the defiler, the whole abusive thing Zerg can do to defend is the defiler can pop out of either Nidus and then uh Dark Swarm and then escape back through the Nidus before the vessel can can uh, irradiate it. So like the fact that we just saw that is insane. I mean yeah. it's luckily for action he actually didn't get killed off there, but that is wild, man. Yeah. It's a it's a special day here. Now, a lot of plagues starting to go down. Like, action's starting to come out on the map. You can see his supply, 142 to 168. This is what we were getting a little bit nervous about, even though Light had an advantage. Uh, like, supply-wise, he had a lot of good tech and everything. He wasn't able to break in. And now action is starting to run around the map with Ling Ultra Defiler, which, I mean, if Ling Ultra Defiler shows up somewhere, it's dead. Yeah, this is getting crazy, man. I'm just still thinking about that that science facility over the Nidus, man. This is a new day, guys. This is called Science Facility Nidus Day. All right? <laughs> it's a holiday. We have it every year, okay? Put your science vessel decorations up around your house with the Nidus's <laughs> under them. Yeah. Oh, my God. Old Saint Light, man. <laughs> the patron yeah, saint, saint Light of comes in there. It's the, the patron saint of, 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 of stopping defilers. The mm -hmm. tale goes that he put his vessel over the Nidus. <laughs> and so now we uh, we all wear red on that day. And Yep. Yep. Okay, Get well. Drunk on whatever is purple. And yeah, I mean, it's a whole <laughs> holiday, man. 
Uh, now we do have the uh, Ultras getting in here. A lot of Irradiates going down and everything, but now you see Action taking over the Supply Advantage. And you generally don't see a Terran able to come back from this position. We did see JYJ in a somewhat similar position come back already in ASL, but... Uh, it was it was a bit different. He was like further ahead than where Light is right now. Light does have four bases. Those bottom right bases are fantastic. I'm not sure what he has down there to defend, but Action has like everything that he wants right now. There's not like another piece of tech that he's looking for. He's running around with exactly what he wants to finish the game with. This is a crazy game, man, to start things yeah. off. Um, and, you know... It's easy to follow what's happening on the left side of the map here, but honestly, like, if Terran can't keep a fourth base up for very long, the money is all going to dry up. The, ma the main's already mined out. That happened a little while ago, but the natural's going to mine out here as well. And, I mean, Terran seems like they can control the bottom right, at least for now, but it, that's easier said than done. Terrans yeah. usually try to keep their bases close to them. Um, because it is hard to have, like, another main and, and not die to counterattacks. Terran is the slowest race as far as army movement. Yeah, that's that's certainly true. Now, Light is... He's still got a strong army in the center here. And about the bottom right, it's exactly that trick that you mentioned. I do want to point that out again to just show how cool Light is playing tonight. He has a floating eBay over a hold position as CB on the ramp with Marines behind. And when you're on Ling Ultra Defiler, you literally have no way to break that ramp. Like, you need lurkers to do it. So, Light is using every trick, including new tricks that he invented, to try to be action here. But it might not be enough with another Defiler getting into this natural. Yeah, this is pretty scary. Um, he is going to be coming in here. And uh, I, I think... I mean, it's not it's not oh, over yet, but it could be the start of it being over here with with the infrastructure getting destroyed. And I don't see any easy targets right now for light moving here on the bottom. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, I mean, another dark swarm up here like Ooh. that one right there, and like this is the main source of all the infantry in the game. Yeah, this is it's getting really rough. But in close quarter barracks, you can hold position Marines in the middle, and Ultras can't really get them. So there's like a slight chance he can clean this up, but it, it looks like it's getting worse and worse. Like action is just making hatcheries everywhere, and Light is shutting a lot of them down. But he can't really field more army because everything's in his base attacking his Raxes. Yeah, and a couple more uh, Adrenal Zerglings come into the main here, and it's like. Look, I mean, it's taking a long time to kill this. Terran's getting a lot of value with this, but the reality is, like, that army that's roaming the middle of the map, that's not getting any bigger, man. You know, and eventually the Zerg's going to have enough to overrun that. Yeah, you know, this is really looking like it's just going to turn into an action victory pretty quickly here. Losing your main base is just too much stuff is going down, even if you try to rebuild everything in the bottom right. There's no way to catch up. Like, Zerg just has too much of an advantage at that point. Um, but I got to say, it's like a really, really interesting game. A lot of cool tactics going down on both sides. Uh, action utilizing his new, different Crazy Zerg style here. Look at this. Light is even raiding his battle cruiser, which actually is a real move. <laughs> Where you kind of... Yeah, it's so cool. It, it adds a lot of damage, actually. It's like a funny thing to see. You almost never see that as well. Uh, but yeah, I, I got to say, I think... The big mistake here, Taste, is where are those dropships? They just didn't get anything done for life. I think you're right. I think that that point is so important because, you know, there's been so much that's happened in this game. One could easily forget that that's actually what went down. But, yeah, I think the four uh, dropships, that was really the climax there. It was either going to be light, you know, takes it or he gets shut down. And uh, he got shut down. In action, played a long, you know, uphill game. It's a very, it's very much an action victory here, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and you know, they were even for most of this until action kind of eked out a few percentage points ahead. And it looks like this game's almost over here, as we got, you know, now Ultras and Lings hitting both of the locations with infrastructure. And even though this roaming Terran army is pretty strong, it's not going to put out. Um, all the fires that Terran or the Zerg is creating right now. You know, there, there's, there's, Zerg is getting too strong and there's not enough punishes here. Yeah. Yeah. Like, 
I, I'm surprised, honestly, that Light was even able to carry all of that. And he's still trying, man. Like, he's still in here trying to push. Uh, unfortunately for him, Plague Battlecruisers with a spore, Plague Spore underneath finishing off. It's going to easily push that back. Scourge coming in for the cleanup. Damn. Uh, he still has, like, an army that's walking around a bit. He still has fantastic upgrades, and he's still mining an okay amount, a good amount of vessels out. But the control of this map is completely actions, and you're just not going to be able to fight back against it. Yeah, this is a lot here, man. And again, you know, even though the Terran has another starting location here at the bottom right, this is a lot of infrastructure to lose, a lot of depots. Um, and again, we're just not really seeing light make a dent anywhere here on the map. And I don't, I don't think that there's much of a way for him to do it, right? Like, uh, I, he's he's staying in the game because he knows that the gas is going to be getting lighter and lighter for action if he can deny fifth and sixth bases over and over. And he's denied them each, like, several times. But now he's having a harder time actually clearing them out. And that's, that's where action, like, super-duper guarantees the victory is just getting a little bit more gas. Yeah, yeah. Um, light's hanging on, but... I think he will probably be abandoning this game yeah. soon. You got to keep in mind as well. This is, uh, I think, one of the most fatiguing uh, ways to play is this SK Terran, and like you know, he has a lot of games ahead of him here. So mm -hmm. I'm kind of surprised he hasn't left already. But I guess you know he's got that yeah. kind of stamina. Yeah, yeah, he's he's definitely putting in the effort here, but. Uh, you know, you're, you're certainly right. The thing is, he knows that, like, the top two left bases are out of gas. So he's, like, kind of hoping that he's just going to be playing against less and less and less ultras and more and more lings. See these fire bats here being dematrix. It's like that you, you can see some victories that you don't expect in TBZ occasionally because Zerg yeah. just gets so gaslight that the army turns into, like, 90% lings. And, you know, right, when, right, when you right. hit that critical mass, 3-3 three, three bats with medics and marines, it's... The but Zerglings I mean, do not do very much. With the two extra bases, I don't think that's ever going to happen, right? I mean, he's, yeah. he's got two new bases from the four, so he has basically actually literally the same amount of gas that he would have had before. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, I guess In fact, a little even bit more because he's got... Geysers. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Those it's, two bases count as half a base right now, so... Right, right. Um, and so the top right position's gone. Um, this makes defending a little bit less taxing for light, but I mean positionally, this is like a 1-9 to nine match up here. I mean, Zerg pretty much can't lose this. That doesn't mean that Zerg will easily be able to wipe the, the natural, which really at this point in time is probably the most important base to try to hit here. Much more so than the main, because the main is going to mine out eventually here too, but um, I mean, the, the map is actions right now, and it, it's very clear that it is his because he's expanded literally everywhere that's not, you know, really in the Terran's turf. Yeah, and action can take, like, every map based on the map, and you actually see him starting to do that, throwing down hatcheries at three, at, at nine. He's taking that base that's supposed to be the third base for light. Uh, there's just, I mean, he's going to force his way in. At this point, he's probably, this is the latter game, this is where you type Naga, you know? Yeah, I think he needs to Naga here in a second because this is this is rough, man. He is going to try to force his base down here, the, the, the third base for the bottom right location. Um, I don't know that he's going to be able to withstand the amount of lings that are going to be coming here soon. Yeah, it, fire bats and bunkers can do a pretty reasonable job, but plagues continuing to go down. Yeah, that'll eventually burn down that, <laughs> that bunker. Yeah. I mean, you gotta you gotta give light credit where it's due. Like he's lost his main base and stuff. He's still walking around with like ninety supply here, <laughs> trying to make something happen on a new base. Yeah, this is probably gonna be too much here at the natural. I mean, again, the dark swarms just keep coming down here. Uh, I'm kind of blown away that Light is still fighting in this game, guys. I don't know what to say. Yeah, well, ah, it's, it's, he's just still here in this game. Yeah, it seems like, uh, I don't know. Like, I, I don't know exactly his mentality or something, but it's like he knows that he cannot win. Is yeah. He, is it, he trying it, to do it to, to make, like, to screw with action maybe? Like, 
I mean, you want to do anything that you think can help your position or hinder your opponents. So, like, right. you know, maybe maybe action starts to get sloppy or something because he's there just like, it God. Is. <laughs> okay. GG. Probably one of the latest GGs we've seen here in ASL. Yeah. yeah. I was like, all right, what now? Are you going to float your buildings to the corner? Mm -hmm. I mean, how long are we going to do this for? All right, so uh, action wins game one. It was an impressive set.